Hi friends, good morning all. Welcome back. We are discussing capital structure theories. In capital structure theories, we have discussed net income approach, net operating income approach and traditional approach. The last one and very important among all the capital structure theories is Modiglani and Miller approach which is popularly known as MM approach or MM hypothesis. We call it MM approach or MM hypothesis. Now what is Modiglani Miller approach? Now let us recollect net operating income approach. So what is the proposition of net operating income approach? According to net operating income approach, if debt increases, the component of debt increases in a company, KO and V, KO and V are not affected. KO and E are not affected. KO is constant. Then if debt increases, it will increase the cost of equity. If debt increases, this will increase the cost of equity. So this constant overall cost of capital approach, which is proposed by net operating income, though conceptually, theoretically it is good. The operational justification of how this KE is to be calculated, how KO is constant were not proved in net operating income approach. So net operating income approach failed in giving operational justification of this KO is constant. Then Modiglani Miller approach, they, this Modiglani Miller, they took net operating income approach and they gave this operational justification for this net operating income approach. So also diagrammatically if you observe this net operating income approach as such is not having any diagrammatic representation. But if you see this Modiglani and Miller approach they have very clearly given how this KE and KO you know constant KO and increasing KE works out. So this is KD, this is your capital structure, this is your cost of capital, this is your KO, this is your KE. So, capital structure comprising 0% debt, 25% debt, 50% debt, 75% debt and 100% debt. Cost of capital 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, 25% .5 and so on. Okay, so MM approach defined this risk premium. How this risk premium is to be calculated, how this KE is to be calculated, they have given equation. They said KE is equal to KO plus debt by equity into KO minus KD. Do you remember in capital asset pricing model we calculated KE is equal to risk free rate plus beta into RM minus RF. Risk free rate plus beta into RM minus RF. You remember this same thing. So here here, if you observe this point, here in case of an unlevered firm, KE is equal to KO. In case of an unlevered firm, that means a company which is having 100% equity capital and the company which has zero debt. For them, KE is equal to KO. So, I started my journey here as an equity shareholder of company when the company is unlevered. Now what happened? Company is increasing uses of debt. Now company has become levered. That means my risk is increasing. What is the risk equity shareholder is taking? Debt equity ratio. The higher the debt is, the higher the risk is. So this D by E, if it is increasing, it is a risk. So this is the risk free rate I used to get when the company is not having any financial risk when KE is equal to KO. Now that the company started borrowing money, that leverage entered, financial risk entered, debt by equity is my risk. Debt by equity is my risk. Then this KO minus KD is the risk premium I seek for taking this risk. So similarly, like how in capital asset pricing model, risk premium is RM minus RF. Here risk premium is KO minus KD. Here it is KO minus KD. KD. Now, just look at the formula and try to understand the components of formula once. How this KE is calculated. So, though net operating income approach gave you the same theory, they failed to prove the operational justification of how KO is constant, how KE increases. So, how KE increases. 
this question mark was not answered by net operating income approach which is you know proved by modiglani and miller approach that ke is equal to so and so they have given one formula they have given the operational justification and they proved that yes this is the theory okay so now what is mm approach this modiglani and miller approach has two parts this modiglani and miller approach has two parts first one is called first paper which they have given in 1950s approx 1958 or something like that second theory second paper is submitted in 1960s the difference between mm approach first paper and mm approach second paper is the difference between mm approach first paper second paper the difference between first paper and second paper is that in first paper there are no taxes like how all other capital structure theories they ignored the taxes so they started with an assumption that there are no corporate and personal taxes so initially mm approach also followed that assumption but later they introduced they introduced or rather recognized the presence of taxes in to capital structure theories they introduced taxes into capital structure theories so when they you know presented the first paper without taxes what are the propositions when they introduced taxes what are the propositions we have to understand this too and then there is a concept called arbitrage as per mm approach so there are certain assumptions there are certain propositions we need to understand them okay so i have given that clearly in this note so look at this slide point number 1 NOI approach does not provide operational justification for irrelevance of capital structure that means when capital structure changes KO doesn't change that NOI approach said but operational justification was not there to MM approach provides operational justification for constant overall cost of capital and constant total value of the firm 3 mm approach is based on the following additional assumptions what are the assumptions there are four assumptions but that fourth assumption taxation is there no that is revised later so what are the assumptions one capital markets are perfect that means information is freely available and there are no transaction costs what are transaction costs when you buy share when you sell share you need to incur some brokerages and transaction costs no so they assumed that there are no transaction costs and the second thing is all investors are rational so investors logically practically rationally they think three firms can be grouped into equivalent risk class this is very important this is very 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 important so all the firms say for example there are 100 firms take software industry in software industry imagine there are 100 firms in that 100 firms take two firms whose size is same whose risk class is same whose operational risk is same say for example tcs and infosys consider tcs and infosys there is no much difference in the size and scale of course tcs is a bigger company no doubt about it but still overall as a layman or rather for theoretical classroom discussion we can assume that both of them belong to same level same risk class both of them are exposed to same type of risk now when we categorize infosys and tcs into same risk class mm approach says they will have same ko that overall cost of capital whatever is there they will have the same ko this ko is not from cost of capital point of view this is from valuing the company's point of view that means if one company is earning 1 crore rupee profit if i am valuing the firm as 1 crore rupee profit divided by appropriate discount rate 10% for second firm also you have to use 10% discount rate only why because they belong to same risk class that means in a very simple language to enable you to understand to enable you to understand in very simple language one company having you know both debt and equity another company having only equity so its capital structure comprises debt and equity this capital structure comprises comprises only equity there will be no impact of this debt financing on valuation so what is the summary of modiglani miller approach a limited a limited is using 100% equity b limited is using imagine for example 30% equity 70% debt 
if both these companies have same ebit if both these companies are into same risk class same size so they belong to same risk class they belong to same size now modiglani miller approach says a limited value a limited value should be equal to b limited value a limited value must be equal to b limited value one firm cannot have a higher value simply because of its capital structure so if capital structure is different their ko will not be different their value of the firm will not be different i'll give you one simple example you know for you to understand this okay say you bought a car you bought a car i bought a car two persons you and i you bought a car i bought a car which car you bought say for example verna 12 lakhs which car i bought verna 12 lakhs both are same both are same model variant also is same so whatever the model you purchased the same model i purchased okay you used it for 2 years i used it for 2 years but when you purchased you have money so you purchased it with 100% cash out of your pocket what i did is 30% i have put cash which is my equity 70% i have taken loan from icici bank icici bank loan i have taken loan from icici bank now we used car similarly there is no difference in the uses of car both of us you and i we are equally efficient we are equally professional you know when it comes to handling the car and driving maintenance is same so after 2 years when your car comes to maruti true value showroom say for example you have taken car for valuation i have taken car for valuation do you think your car will be valued more because you invested equity do you think my car will have less value because i borrowed money the value of the car has nothing to do with how much of the debt car has the value of the car has nothing to do with how much of the loan car is having on its head what is the debt liability what is the debt obligation responsibility it makes no difference a car is a car that's it car will be valued with other parameters but not based on the capital structure now your car is a limited my car is b limited simple so your business and my business will be valued same at same discount rate if ebit is same value will be same this is what modiglani and miller said now let us look at the propositions so what are the propositions look there are three propositions a b and c just read the a b and c once yourself try to read and understand it yourself already i have explained all the three points to you first thing is value of the firm is ebit by appropriate discount rate this appropriate discount rate will be same for all the firms belonging to same industry which are similar and having equal risk characteristics proposition 1 proposition 2 how ke is calculated i told you ke is equal to ko plus d by e into ko minus kd third one is cost of capital is not affected by capital structure decisions ko is constant if you recollect i have explained everything in this diagram to you this is graphical representation of modigliani and miller, miller approach this is graphical representation of modigliani and miller approach you understand so this is paper 1 what is their paper 2 that we'll see later little later we'll see okay now based on their first proposition and you know initial paper first paper let us solve some questions okay so look here read this question problem number 17 abc limited adopts constant wscc approach constant weighted average cost of capital approach means net operating income and mnm approach and believes that its cost of debt and overall cost of capital are 9% and 12% respectively so can i say kd is equal to 9 ko is equal to 12 
if the ratio of market value of debt to equity is 0.8 debt by equity is equal to 0.8 what rate of return do equity shareholders earn assume that there are no taxes when they said assume that there are no taxes it is paper 1 Modi, modiglani miller hypothesis stage 1 so ke you remember formula ke is equal to ko plus debt by equity into ko minus kd simple substitute numbers in this so what is ko 12 percent plus debt by equity 0 0.8 ko 12 kd 9 so 12 minus 9 is 3 3 into 0 0.8 is 2.4 plus 12 is equal to 14.40 this is the answer that's it simple question this is you know all these next three four questions what we are doing are previously given in the examinations so please be careful okay so you are done with this question shall we go to the next one problem number 18 this is also very important and interesting model okay so look at this one third of the total market value of x limited consists of loan stock so there is one x limited there is one x limited and there is one y limited okay so what about this x limited it has one third loan stock that means their capital comprises one third debt two third equity so can i say debt equity ratio is one by two debt by equity is equal to one by two because one by three by two by three one by two correct another company y limited is identical in every respect to x limited except that its capital structure is all equity they work with 100 percent equity and its cost of equity is equal to 16 percent can i say cost of equity and overall cost of capital is same for this company ke is equal to ko for unlevered firm ke is equal to ko okay why even if you substitute that with numbers also weight of equity will be one no weight of debt will be zero so cost of debt into weight of debt plus cost of equity into weight of equity when you do ko is equal to ke so they have 16 percent according to modiglani miller approach if we ignore the taxation and tax relief on debt capital what would be the cost of equity of x limited now look at the data given in the question and try to understand what i have written you know with that red color ink just look at it the basic data i have captured you understand now cost of capital of x limited will be equal to cost of capital of y limited why because they belong to same risk class they are similar identical in every respect so because ky is 16 percent there KO is 16 percent here also KD is 10 percent given in the question now they are asking you what is cost of equity of x limited same formula cost of equity is equal to overall cost of capital plus debt by equity into KO minus KD that implies ke is equal to what is ko 16 debt equity ratio 1 by 2 ko 16 kd 10 16 minus 10 is 6 6 into half is 3 3 plus 16 is equal to 19 so what they asked what is the cost of equity of x limited it is 19 simple question but what you need to understand is simply because x limited is levered firm y limited is unlevered firm they will not have two different KOs. the cost of capital is constant so two firms having same parameters having same operating risk and belonging to same risk class will have same KO, will have same value of the firm that is the reason y limited ke is equal to ko is equal to 16 percent i have taken that as ko of x limited also simple you understand it next one this is very important so now let us go to the theory mm approach i told you there are two papers first one is ignoring ignoring taxation second one is considering taxation correct considering taxation now look here see this one valuation of levered firm and unlevered firm so read the second point first point in first point they said in their initial 
propositions in their initial hypothesis hypothesis that means the first paper they said there are no corporate taxes value of levered firm and value of unlevered firm will be same so value of levered firm is equal to value of unlevered firm and the overall cost of capital of two firms having you know same characteristics belonging to similar risk class will be same but in second paper read the second point very interesting in their second paper submitted in 1963 the second paper mm introduced taxes into the theory this is the catch mm introduced taxes into the theory so taxes were introduced then what happened then they said value of levered firm will be more than value of unlevered firm now you may ask why all of a sudden value of levered firm increased it is because of tax advantages on the debt now that we assumed now that we concluded that ha there are taxes when there are taxes there will be tax savings or tax advantages also so when you use debt obviously you will get tax savings there so when you consider the tax savings on debt value of levered firm will be more than value of unlevered firm so how they said first they said value of unlevered firm is equal to value of unlevered firm value of unlevered firm v u l is equal to e b i t now you have taxes so into 1 minus t divided by ke have you seen that ebit into 1 minus t anywhere recollect in your ratio analysis you have seen this do you remember this is your no pat net operating profit after tax that is what net operating income approaches okay so no pat is equal to ebit into 1 minus t so they said value of unlevered firm is equal to ebit into 1 minus t which is no pat divided by capitalization rate and they said value of levered firm is equal to value of unlevered firm plus debt into tax benefit so how value how unlevered firm is valued simple its net operating profit after tax which is ebit into 1 minus tax rate divided by ke you remember previously we used to do it as ni by ke ni by ke what is ni earnings available to equity shareholders then you ignored the tax now you are considering tax that's all you understand so ebit into 1 minus t by ke now you can ask pavan sir net that ni net income means ebit minus i boss this is unlevered firm so there is no interest that is the reason ebit is earnings available to equity shareholders now you introduced a tax so you are multiplying that with into 1 minus t that's it and then value of levered firm is equal to value of unlevered firm plus tax advantage on debt so based on this we do one question question number 19 very interesting question okay there are two firms p and q which are identical except p does not use any debt in its capital structure while q has 8 lakhs 9% debentures in its capital structure both the firms have earnings before interest and tax of 2 lakh 60000 per annum and the capitalization rate is 10% assuming the corporate tax of 30% calculate the value of these firms according to mm hypothesis calculate the value of these firms according to mm hypothesis read the question carefully so the first thing what you need to consider here is what is the catch corporate tax of 30% have you ever seen corporate tax before in capital structure theories no this is the first time somewhere corporate taxation is discussed in whole capital structure theories net income net operating income modiglani traditional nowhere corporate tax is there except in mm approach second paper so now corporate taxes are there now value of unlevered firm which is unlevered firm here p does not use debt so p value of p how do we calculate how do we calculate ebit into 1 minus tax rate divided by ke okay so what is ke here 10% so this is 260000 into 1 minus 0.3 0.7 divided by 10% so how much it is 260000 
divided by 0.7 sorry into 0.7 divided by 0.1 that comes to 18 lakhs 20 thousand correct 18 lakhs 20 thousand okay now q limited value of levered firm is equal to value of unlevered firm plus debt into tax rate correct so what is value of levered firm 18 lakh 20 thousand value of unlevered firm plus what is debt 8 lakhs debt into what is tax rate 0 0.3 so 8 lakhs into 0 0.3 is 2 lakhs 40 thousand plus 18 lakh 20 thousand it is 20 lakh 60 thousand that's it so you understand this if you understand the theory and concept problems are very 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 simple so i suggest you read modiglani miller approach theory carefully first mm approach theory carefully first there are two papers two parts of the hypothesis first without taxes second with taxes read the theory and there are four problems please solve all the four problems two times then you will get proper idea and understanding of capital structure theories so with this we have completed capital structure theories so shall we start with our next chapter